So now we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. I did a uh, quick uh, preview of it, made a short out of it, so I film differently when I'm going to make a short out of it. Plus I keep it to a minute uh, long. All I make so far are the minute long shorts. I haven't figured out how to make the longer one. So we got uh, 2N3906 right there. It's a PMP bipolar junction transistor, and you can check the data sheet for what the other uh, numbers down there uh, mean. Um, you got to make sure you get the right manufacturer that made this particular one and it's uh, probably a knockoff um, from China so who knows how accurate uh, that may be but in any case we have uh, the uh, pin layout over there so if it starts with 2N and it's a bipolar junction transistor there's uh, I think JFETs either JFETs or MOSFETs I can't remember that also start with uh, 2N different transistor completely um, you want uh, to be a bipolar junction transistor if it starts with 2N, then the left pin is probably emitter, middle pin is probably the base, right pin is probably the collector when you're looking at the front of it. So we want the emitter going to the positive supply. I got a jumper to the positive supply there. Um, and then I'm going to work my way down. Usually I try to work positive up, down to negative as much as possible. So we want to put the emitter to the positive supply. So when you see that, this is a PMP bipolar junction transistor, emitters to the positive supply, that means it's going to behave as a switch. And then uh, NPN uh, bipolar junction transistors, their emitters go to the uh, negative supply when they're being used as a switch. So that means it just turns on and off uh, completely for the most part, as long as you got enough uh, base uh, current. If you got uh, resistance from the emitter uh, to, in this case, the positive supply right there, then it would be some other kind of transistor circuit. Be aware of that. Um, we're not going to dwell on that too much. Just be aware of that. So we got the positive supply there. Now, we're going to make this so that when light is falling on there, that will help hold the transistor off. We need emitter to base current to turn the transistor on. It needs to be about uh, 0.6 volts less than the positive supply at the base right there. So about 4.4 volts or uh, less in order for current to flow through there. And we got a voltage divider here that we're making with the light dependent uh, resistor. And so if enough light is falling on there, that raises the voltage enough where it stays off. And then if it gets dark enough, then that pulls down the voltage enough where you get a little bit of emitter to base current and it's gonna allow many times, probably like 200 times as much current will be allowed through emitter to collector. But uh, you know, as long as the load limits it below that, um, the load will be what actually sets the current. Um, so we got the transistor there for the light dependent resistor. And uh, I did this with the short, which I put together kind of quickly. So I may not have wired it exactly how I want, but I did something like that. Positive rail there, the emitter, that's all one node, one connection, all of these dots, so we can plug other components into this roll right here, and we have a direct connection to the positive supply. Once I apply power, you really should not have power applied while you're building the circuit. Um, so sometimes you'll see me do that in my videos, uh, but uh, you, you really shouldn't. That's a bad habit. So this uh, should be the 15K resistor right there. I see red, red. On that and you don't have to memorize the color code uh, but if you get familiar with it I think those colors are showing up really good right there so uh, brown uh, green that's uh, one five black is zero so those are digits one five zero and then the uh, red there that's two that's a multiplier so times a hundred for fifteen thousand or you can just say two more zeros because it's uh, red uh, right there so that works with the uh, one through uh, nine uh, uh, numbers and, and uh, zero two as well black would be no more zeros that'd be 150 if that band is black or but it's uh, if it's brown it'd be 1500 it's red it's uh, 15,000 right there pretty easy and then that is brown don't know how well that's showing up one percent tolerance could be one percent higher or lower and uh, so yeah this is really uh, I'm going really slow on this so I hope you don't mind so we put that there, but I do intend these videos for absolute beginners. So um, just whatever I think will uh, be good to explain at that moment, I will. And this circuit's uh, pretty simple. So we're gonna do a little extra right there. So now at the collector right there, 
So this doesn't determine how well the transistor conducts other than setting an upper limit uh, right there. So if we don't have quite enough emitter to base current uh, flowing, then the current will be lower. Um, but uh, once the transistor will conduct better than the load uh, right there, then the load will be what limits the current. We don't have to put the LED in resistor in the order that you see on the schematic. You never do. Um, be aware of that. But the long lead, the anode, needs to go towards the more positive side of the uh, power and the short lead, the cathode, towards the more negative. So I'm going to put the long lead, the anode, right there. And uh, if I remember right, this is how I wired it up in the video so that you could still see the uh, pins on uh, the lead dependent resistor. In fact, I think I actually uh, put it in uh, that way. Maybe over one spot. But I tried to make it so you could see both legs. I remember that. And then now we got uh, 220 ohm resistor to set the current. 5 volts. Red LED is going to drop about 2 volts. And then we'll have about 3 volts across the 220 ohm resistor. No matter which order we put them in. And that will set the current. And I think it's like about 15 milliamps of current. If I remember it. So yeah. That should be everything. We should be uh, completely wire it up. And again. You know it. You can wire this up probably in less than a minute and um you know i took a lot longer because i did some extra explaining and uh, stuff right there so uh, we'll plug this in right there and uh again i'm not making the short now so we can look at the power supply again power supply is off and um it's good to do that until uh, you're sure you wired everything up and now we'll turn it on and you don't see anything because it's not dark enough i can cover it to get it to uh light up or we can turn the lamp off like that. And I am getting more current now. So my finger was not, uh, where is that? Uh, yeah, up arrow right there. So that does say uh, 10, 11 uh, milliamps of current. That's what uh, that says. Also, these connections aren't as good as a higher quality breadboard. So it may lower it a little bit. Yeah, you can see it kind of went up a little bit when I was pressing uh, right. Uh, but uh, in any case, we're not gonna dwell on that uh, too much. The main thing is we have a circuit here. I want to turn that lamp off. There we go. We have a circuit here where if it gets dark enough, the LED turns on. Again, it uh, it was in the active region. Now we got uh, about 11 milliamps of current. But if I turn this on, now you can see that the transistor is not conducting perfectly. It's not dark enough, um, but it's you know close enough. It's perfectly fine for this particular circuit right there. If you need to get it to conduct uh, much better at a specific point, there's ways to improve it as well. This is just a starting off point. And uh, the main thing is it's uh, a use for the light dependent resistor because you learn that the resistance changes uh, based on the light falling on it. Um, but uh, you don't see a lot of examples, unless you watch a lot of my videos, where you get a practical uh, use out of it. So. That's uh, the main reason why I started this channel, to uh, demonstrate um, things that I see in books where they don't really explain how you can use them. I try to make a demonstration circuit to give you to the next step because ultimately, who knows what you're going to need a light dependent uh, resistor circuit for. Um, you know, there's just millions of different things that you may use it for. And so I can't uh, get all of them. I can just show you the basics, how it works, and you can go from there. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.